We find Banshee and the other escaping heroes floating out in space, shocked at their whereabouts. A pair of sentinels fly out towards drifting mutants, intent on rescuing them as they release spheres containing breathable air that encase them. Their mission complete, they ferry the captives back inside where Steven admonishes them and explains that they cannot escape. Switching to Scott, he questions Peter about the missing heroes not being on Earth when Corbo says that he isn't sure but that he's hooked Cerebro up to NORAD's database and that they can track the Sentinels through their unique parts with it. Eventually, they learn that the machines are operating from S.H.I.E.L.D.'s orbital platform. We then turn to Cape Canaveral as a reporter talks of a midnight launch of a space shuttle despite dangerous solar activity when he swaps to another reporter, Geraldo, who informs of rising anti-mutant sentiments due to the return of Sentinels. He then goes on that the home of Judge Chalmers was attacked when he's interrupted by the arrival of five pilots that are boarding the craft and that due to how quickly the launch was scheduled, no information on the crew is available. Inside, we learn that it's the X-Men as Storm takes off her helmet, glad to be free of it, as Kurt asks about the actual crew and Corbo tells him that it's all deception to get them on when he turns and asks Peter why he hasn't removed his helmet but gets no response. As the shuttle prepares for launch, Peter transforms into steel while shouting out a name, Mikhail, and coming to his senses apologizes for being afraid. He explains that Mikhail is his brother and was a cosmonaut who died when his rocket exploded and that they were very close to each other as Corbo tells him that he lost people during the Apollo 1 fire and knows how he feels. As the final seconds of the countdown tick by, each member of the crew have their own thoughts, ranging from trepidation to determination, concern, and excitement for the oncoming adventure. With the countdown reaching zero, the rocket begins its journey into the dark reaches of space. Receiving word from the base that everything's gone well with the launch, we turn to StarCore 1 where the ongoing solar flares are becoming worse. The equipment's readings are being thrown off and that the flares are stronger than they anticipated. Back with the rocket, it's finally reached space when Kurt turns and jokes to Peter about whether he's disappointed or not. Colossus, though, is in no mood as he feels sick, but Corbo assures him that it's simply his body getting used to the zero gravity when they get a message coming in from StarCore. We briefly turn back to Earth, where a man is heading to the post office in a small town outside Dublin, Ireland. Going to the postman, he urgently informs him that the letter he hands over be delivered to Sean Cassidy immediately and without delay. Heading back out into the storming winds, he's met by a shadowy figure. Shocked at his appearance, the man tells the figure that his cousin's been warned and will stop his plans. The figure, though, shoots a blast from a staff, indifferent to the threat as he tells the corpse that Sean will die trying to stop Black Tom. We then return to StarCore 1, where Stephen Lang spots the incoming shuttle and Peter calls over the intercom that they are requesting sanctuary from the solar radiation and seeing that there's unknown people on there denies them entry when one of the workers' machines detects the mutants on board. Lang sends out the sentinels and seeing this, Corbo warns everyone to prepare their suits but Kurt is worried about Colossus whose suit was destroyed. Dodging the oncoming attacks, they unfortunately are hit. The damage knocks Storm loose, severing her lifeline and sucking her out of the ship as Cyclops screams for her and turning, sees Colossus suffocating and yells for Corbo to get them inside the station any way he can. Following his orders, Peter warns that if he does that, the ship will be unable to return to Earth and rams it into the side of the space station, sending everyone flying about. Turning to Storm, she spots an oncoming sentinel whose last orders were to seek and destroy. Thinking, she decides that her only hope is to try to command the cosmic winds, and concentrating hard, manages to move them into pushing her out of the way. Knowing that she would have been killed, she enshrouds the machine with the cosmic energy, causing it to overload and be blown into the deepest reaches of darkness, screaming the whole way. Hearing this, Storm is unnerved and begins reconsidering her decision to be an X-Man, knowing that one day she may have to actually take a life. Inside the station, the X-Men are fighting for their lives as Colossus hurls a piece of debris through one of the machines while Nightcrawler is shocked at his ferocity. Kurt then sees one of the Sentinels have grabbed Cyclops and released a sleeping gas on him. Moving quick, he grabs a bar and swinging it with all his might, bashes the head in, freeing his friend. 
Thankful for the save, as he couldn't hold his breath much longer, Cyclops warns Kurt of how dangerous showing off can be, but Nightcrawler, a showman at heart, claims that he won't change for anyone as the two dodge another attack. Colossus shouts to Nightcrawler to execute the attack they worked on in the danger room, and jumping forward, Kurt lands on a board, springing the Russian forward at a high speed as he curls into a ball to strike the attacking robot. Releasing an optic blast on the last sentinel, Cyclops is suspicious of how easily they've been able to destroy them as Trask's models were more challenging. Wondering of when the real threat will reveal itself, the leader wants to quickly find Jean and the others, but Colossus is desperate to save Storm as he shouts that Scott doesn't even care about her fate. He's then interrupted by none other than Storm, and he's glad to see her as she rushes to rejoin them. Storm is also glad to be back when Cyclops suddenly makes contact with Jean as she thrusts images into his head and tells him where they're all located but to hurry as Lang means to murder them all. Acting quickly, he sends Storm, Colossus, and Nightcrawler below to save Banshee and Wolverine and that he'll head for Jean when Storm warns that he'll be by himself. Reassuring her that he'll handle anything that attacks, he repeats his order but warns that Stephen Lang is his to deal with. Taking Corbo with him, the Doctor feels that Cyclops might have been too harsh on his team, but knows he has more to worry about. Turning to Steven, he isn't concerned about the Sentinels being destroyed as he's gotten all the information he needs from the captives as he moves to kill them. Before he can strike though, the door flies off the wall and Scott blasts him as he yells for Peter to free the others. Moving fast, Cyclops quickly strikes Lang, knocking him into the equipment as he strikes repeatedly, and Jean appears yelling that he's killing the man. She then yells that there's someone in the other room as Summers is struck from behind. Seeing the attacker, Jean is unable to do anything as Steven informs her that it's an undefeatable foe and the purpose of Project Armageddon and tells her that her powers are being neutralized. Telling the unknown newcomer to take her away, the rest of the X-Men arrive a short time later and can't fathom the sight before them. Standing opposite of them are the original X-Men, claiming them to be imposters as Charles Xavier urges the original team to attack, warning that they are facing their deadliest enemy and to kill them all.